In this video, we're going to use the three steps to sketch method to get a really nice graph of y equals cosine three x. All right, we have our method and our grid. And we know that this method is for graphs that are in this general form a cosine bx. So these are unshifted cosine graphs. And once we know that, uh, we can jump into step one, find the essentials. So it's very easy to see where a and b are in this equation. a is an understood one in front of cosine. That tells us our amplitude is one, distance from midline to either max or min. And then we see b is three. So we should know there will be three cycles between zero and two pi, if we were to graph all the way to two pi. Um, b also helps us find our period. So to find the period, you simply calculate two pi divided by b. So two pi divided by three, or two pi over three is our period. That's the length of one horizontal cycle. All right, and the last thing we wanna do, this is really our setup step, finding the essentials. Let's decide on scale labels. And I think the horizontal scale is the most important. And this method, we always will take our period and divide by four and use that as our horizontal scale label. So we have two pi over three divided by four or multiply by one fourth. That's just a little bit easier to look at. You see you get two pi over 12 or pi over six. So we will count by pi over six when labeling our horizontal tick marks. Uh, the reason we divide by four is because we will in the next step have four key points that we're plotting. And so this will equally space our points and ensure that they align with our tick marks. And that just makes for a nice clean graph and it also just makes things easier on us. All right, we've got our horizontal scale label. Um, our vertical scale label is very easy. Usually it works just to use A. So we'll use one here. All right, let's label our tick marks. So we'll start with the horizontal. Let's count by one pi over six. So we have one pi over six, two pi over six, which reduces to pi over three. 3 pi over 6, which reduces to pi over 2, 4 pi over 6. And good news here, our fourth tick mark with this method should always match the period. So 2 pi over 3, it matches. That's great. We're on the right track. All right, let's keep going. We have 5 pi over 6, 6 pi over 6, 7 pi over 6, 8 pi over 6. All right. So just thinking ahead, it makes sense that if one cycle happens in two pi over three, two cycles should happen in double that or four pi over three. All right, I'm going to pause and I'll label the other side of the horizontal axis. Um, it'll be the same values, just everything negative. Okay, so hopefully you also have the other side of your horizontal axis labeled just like this. Now let's label our vertical axis, just counting by ones, that's easy enough. All right, now we are set up. We've done all of the really tough work and we've set ourselves up for success. So step two, we're going to plot key points. So we need to know our pattern and our pattern for an unreflected cosine is maximum zero, minimum zero. So we see we don't have a reflected graph because we don't have a negative out front. Um, so we know we'll follow that original pattern. Again, it's max, zero, min, zero. All right, so our maximum happens on the y-axis, and the y value is determined by a. So we see a is one. We know our maximum will happen at zero, one. All right, and this is where our scale label setup really comes in handy because all of our key points will align with our labeled tick marks. Okay, so... We have a maximum, a zero at the first tick mark, a minimum, which just has a y coordinate that's the opposite of a, so in this case it's negative one, and then another zero. And I'm going to go ahead and plot the repeat point that'll start the next cycle just for the ease of sketching in. So we can move to step three. We've plotted our key points in our pattern for cosine, and we can sketch the cosine curve. Okay, so 
a little wobble there, but we have a cosine curve here. And that final point, that one at two pi over three comma one, just helps us with our sketch. So it helps know where we're reaching for, I guess you could say. All right, so we have one cycle, we've sketched it, and now we can repeat. And this part is surprisingly easy. You just duplicate the pattern that you've already done and it'll just come in rounds of four. So we start at that maximum, zero, minimum, zero, maximum. Okay, we could keep going, but we're out of space. So let's sketch that part in. Okay, and then on the other side, in again, groups of four. So let's start at negative four pi over three with a maximum, zero, minimum, zero. Repeat, maximum, zero, minimum, zero. Okay, repeat, it lines up with the cycle we already have graphed in green. So let's sketch in. Okay, and we have four cycles of y equals cosine 3x graphed here. Um, one note, if you were going to continue um, back on the positive side, you hopefully can see one more cycle would fall between what we have and 2 pi. So you would have the three cycles. Remember that B tells you how many cycles you have between zero and two pi. Um, so hopefully you can see that there would be space for another one um, that would also confirm that we have a correct graph here. All right, so that was the three steps to sketch method to graph y equals cosine of three X.